iOS can add a search bar to our views using the searchable modifier, and we can bind a string property to it to filter our data as the user types. To see how it works, we'll try a simple example here, and add a property in our content view to type uh, to track what they're searching for right now. We'll say at state private var search text is an empty string by default. Then add a navigation stack in our view body. And there'll be a text saying searching for, I'll just do search text as string interpolation. And then attach the searchable modifier. We're going to search for the text of our search text with a prompt being look for something. Oops, crazy. Look for something. And I'll also add a nav title here of searching. Let's run it back. And you'll see we have searching for nothing at all and this search bar up here at the top inside a navigation bar. If I go into there and type for hello, we'll see hello up here correctly. And if you type more, it'll, it'll just keep on updating nicely. Now in practice, searchable is best used with some kind of data filtering uh, and that way it'll work really well because uh, the state property when it changes will reinvoke your body property automatically, therefore re-triggering your filtering. It works very, very well. Uh, and so it's common to use, for example, a, a computed property to handle the actual filtering. Uh, for example, we could say, here's our search text. Let's also add a list of names we wanna look through. I could say, let all names, with a capital N, uh, be an array of, let's do soup, let's do uh, Vina, Let's do Melvin and let's do Stephanie. And then we'll add a new property in here called filtered names, it returns an array of strings. And inside here, if our search text is currently empty, we'll just send back all our names. But if there is something in search text, we're gonna filter all names, which means we'll pass every item in there, soup, then Vina, then Melvin, then Stephanie, through a test of our choosing. Give me one name coming in here. And we'll return true if this thing contains our search text. So I can write here, does our name have localized standard contains of our search text? This is the, the best way to look for one substring inside another one when a user is searching for text directly. So does this thing, search text lives somewhere inside name. Uh, it ignores case by default. It's a really, really nice way of working. Um, and then in our main view body here, we'd say, let's not just do a simple text anymore. Let's do a list of our filtered names using self for the identifier. We one name coming in and then simply show, oops, that name in a text view here. Now when that runs, uh, we'll see our list of stuff. There's our search box at the top as before, but now this list below is showing the items from that uh, um, search. So I go in and search for V, for example, we'll get Vina and Melvin correctly here. Uh, you might find sometimes that uh, iOS actually hides this search bar by default. Depends on what you have on the screen. But if it isn't there, it's just a little pull down, go a long way. So again, um, let's just clarify one important thing here. Uh, this localized standard contains method is, is the right way, the best way to handle uh, searching for user input because it automatically ignores case, uppercase and lowercase, which is why Vina and Melvin match for the letter V, but also accents like the E in cafe. Now iOS does not require we make our list searchable but it really makes a huge difference to users.